When a lot of people think of Chinese sports, not a lot comes to mind. Maybe table tennis, badminton, or martial arts. Many people have not put a lot of thought into what the Chinese happen to be playing and watching, unless you are Chinese or you're a major sports executive. But what a lot of people do not realize is there's one sport that captivates the mind of the entire country, and that sport is basketball. Let's talk about watching it first. The Chinese love to watch basketball. It is easily the most watched sport in the entire nation. Two leagues are watched religiously, the Chinese Basketball Association and the National Basketball Association in the USA. In fact, the NBA is so popular that it is the most watched sports league in the entire country, getting many more viewers than the CBA. The NBA in China is more popular than the three largest European soccer leagues combined, six times. The NBA's biggest market worldwide is in China. How many people in China do you think watched the 17-18 NBA season, a seemingly average season? Maybe 100 million? After all, it is a huge country with tons of people. No, 800 million Chinese tuned in to watch at least some part of the season. That's almost 2.5 times many more people than the entire American population. This makes NBA China worth a huge $4 billion, which has no amount of money to look down upon. The popularity of the NBA in China grew massively in the 2000s. This new generation absolutely loved the NBA, and part of the reason was because of Chinese nationals who went off and played in the NBA. That's not the full story though. There's only one man they really cared about seeing, and his name was Yao Ming. How well he plays, how healthy he remains. Yao Ming's popularity in China was unseen before. For anybody unaware, Yao Ming was good at basketball. That's an understatement. Yao was a beast, standing at 7 foot 6. Yao was incredible at basketball, possibly the best in the entire league at the time, and definitely one of the most popular. During his 8 year career in about 500 professional games, Yao had 8 NBA All-Star selections and over 9,200 points. Incredibly talented, he was arguably the most famous Chinese man on the planet at the time, and especially back home. And to the NBA, Yao's success was a golden ticket into the previously untapped market of over 1 billion potential viewers in China. After Yao joined in 2004, the NBA was the first American sports league ever to play a game in China, coincidentally involving Yao Ming's team, the Houston Rockets. Since then, 12 more preseason games have been played across China cities and many more will be sure to follow. After seeing Yao's success, the NBA then pushed across China to gather more players out of the Chinese market. The NBA has decided to build basketball academies all across China, even stretching into the relatively desolate western Xinjiang province compared to the rest of China. After seeing Yao Ming's incredible talent on the TVs, the Chinese youth would then go out and ball up in the local parks. Yao's success was a huge money maker for the NBA and that was a major reason for the basketball expansion. It was all an advertisement campaign. This was a major reason why in 2019 when the manager of Yao Ming's former team retweeted a pro Hong Kong tweet, the Chinese government got extremely angry. They cut ties with the Rockets and many Chinese broadcasters refused to air games that had the Rockets in them. It's why the NBA has been very very cautious on what they say about China. It's why LeBron James had to defend China. But I believe he wasn't educated on, on, on the situation at hand. And, um, and he spoke. The NBA at its core is just another money making machine. It sells not only games but merchandise which have been very popular in China for years. China is rising to become one of the biggest money trees in the NBA's garden. And they do not want to throw their Chinese opportunity away. But there's another league that's also popular in China. China's own, the CBA. The CBA has 20 teams across the country. Oddly enough, the league started out as different sects of the military competing against one another. Teams like the Air Force, Police, Nanjing Army, and Shenyang Army played professional basketball against each other along with other teams. Major League Basketball started as an army activity. To us outside China, I can say this rather confidently because they don't have YouTube there, but to us outside of China, this seems absolutely absurd. Imagine the Boston Red Sox going up against the US Navy or having the French military play in the UEFA alongside the French national team. 
But remember, China is semi-communist, semi-not communist anymore, semi-socialist, and semi-capitalist, but fully likes to advertise as a communist nation. So in the government eyes, these major sports franchises don't fly in China. A public sports franchise with some of the most fit people in the country, such as those in the military, is a much better option for their taste. Although nowadays it is like the American model and has multiple franchises in different cities. If you're curious about the best teams, they are the Bai Rockets in Nanchang and the Guangdong Southern Tigers, who combined have won 18 out of 25 seasons. Many of these players go in the FIBA Asia Cup, an Asian-wide basketball tournament every two years of which China dominated in the 2000s. Between the years 1975 and 2005, China only lost the title twice. They have won the most times out of any nation, 16 times out of 29 cups. Of course, their best player ever, Yao Ming, helped them out just a little bit. Hosting is also a big part. China has hosted the most times out of any FIBA nation, six times. To the Chinese, basketball can be about prestige on the world and Asian stage shown through this tournament. But of course, the Chinese don't just watch basketball all day, they play it too. How would a sport be popular if no one there played it? Basketball was introduced to China in 1895 through the YMCA. That's when an emperor still ruled the Qing Dynasty. It's hard to believe people in the Qing Dynasty were playing basketball. The sport grew quickly because like soccer, you need barely any equipment at all. All you need is a ball, a net, and some friends. It also scales up extremely well. You can play basketball with two players, eight players, or even 20 players. Basketball even plays better the more people you have up to a certain point. And if there's one thing China doesn't lack right now, it's people. You can't do this with games which need special facilities and equipment like hockey, or games that would get a little crowded if you added any extra players like tennis. So why didn't soccer do well? Well, it's a space thing. China half urbanized very quickly thanks to this man, and almost all the Chinese ended up living on the coast, conglomerated in mega cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. So the Chinese weren't spread out on the major fields, they were packed into small cities, and just so happens that basketball is the perfect urban sport. A basketball court is so much smaller than a soccer field or baseball diamond or football field or hockey rink. There simply is just space for more of them in less area. Since parks only have a limited amount of space and most park designers like to put some sort of sport in the parks, they usually opt for a basketball court or tennis court just because they're so small. But remember that China has a surplus of people in these densely crowded cities and tennis is max four players at a time. So basketball courts were the go-to play areas for Chinese cities. Even though the Chinese adore basketball, the Chinese president Xi has been making big pushes to the soccer world stage. China is trying desperately to host the 2030 FIFA World Cup, the first time it would ever be doing so. The Chinese government is pumping a ton of money into FIFA programs and youth soccer programs. However, China, for being such a large country, is quite bad at the sport. In the most recent World Cup qualifiers, Syria has over twice the points as China. For a country with 82 times less people and going through one of the worst civil wars of the last decade, Syria seems to easily beat the Chinese dragon. China is, and for the meantime, always will be a basketball country, no matter how hard their soccer-loving president tries to change that. The Chinese love for basketball is in all honesty a very unexpected thing for us to see outside of China, yet with massive urbanization in Chinese cities, basketball needing very little equipment and a wide range of people, the Chinese army starting their own league across the nation, and the NBA marketing off of Yao Ming's success pushing into the Chinese markets, all the ingredients were there for China's markets to be dominated by this sport. It's no surprise their first Olympic medal ever was won for basketball, and no surprise they dominate the FIBA Asian Cup, with a history of balling since the Qing Dynasty and the most famous man in China being a basketball player, China is, has been, and will continue to be a baller nation. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share with your baller friends, and please subscribe. You can always unsubscribe later and it really, really helps. Thank you so much for watching.